Superposition is an important property of electric fields. Superposition means the fields add together. They combine by vector addition. Superposition means you can calculate the electric field outside any distribution of charges by adding together the fields of those charges. You can build complicated fields of complicated distributions of charge by adding together their Coulomb fields. Here's an example of how this works. Consider this point charge. Its field lines radiate out. And remember, these are field lines. These are not the electric field. The electric field is a vector at every point in the space around the charge. The electric field lines show you the direction of those vectors. They are not the actual vectors themselves. This represents the inverse square field of a point charge. Now, what if we add another charge? So we have two charges. Well, that charge also has an electric field. Its field lines radiate outward. And the point of superposition is that the resulting field, the field that fills the space around the two charges, is going to be the vector sum of the two Coulomb fields. So for example, along the perpendicular bisector here, anywhere along this point, you can see that the, the x component of the electric field vector from this direction is going to be canceled by the electric field, the x component of the electric field coming from the left-hand charge. Consequently, in this region, right along the perpendicular bisector, there's only going to be a y component of the electric field. Uh, at this point, down here at the midpoint between the two charges, the field will be zero because there will be an exactly equal and opposite electric field vector contributed by the left charge and the right charge. If you're at some point up uh, here, you might say uh, this point is about uh, tw uh, twice as far from the right one as it is from the left one. So as a consequence, the magnitude of the electric field in this direction is going to be only one-fourth of the electric field component in this direction, and the result is going to be a vector which is the vector sum of these two. And uh, you see that that vector is tangent to the field line that is the result of superposing these two fields. It's important to be able to think about the field in this qualitative way. Uh, you need this kind of conceptual understanding to really be able to use the full power of superposition. That full power becomes apparent when you uh, look at uh, various configurations of charge. So let's consider a very simple case, a case of two charges We're going to add the Coulomb field of the charge that's on the right to the Coulomb field of the charge that's on the left. This expression is the one you've seen before. It, it describes the Coulomb field at a point R sub f in space in terms of charges that are located at these source coordinates uh, at R s1 for the charge on the right and Rs2 for the charge on the left. Of course, if you want to actually do a calculation, if you want to know what the field is at a particular set of coordinates x and y, then you have to represent these vectors 
in terms of the coordinate frame that you have chosen. Now this is a carefully chosen frame because it's chosen to exhibit clearly the symmetries of the problem. And that's always a good idea when you're picking a reference frame. Although in principle you can choose any arbitrary reference frame you like. Still, this one has the virtue that the, the x-axis of the coordinate frame lies on the axis of axial symmetry of the two charges and the y-axis lies in the plane of bilateral symmetry or reflection symmetry. But here we are uh, putting in a representation of the uh, coordinates and in this frame of reference uh, r sub s1 is just a i hat r sub s2 is minus a i hat the two charges are spaced by a distance of 2a and we reduce complexity by assuming the charges are equal and that we're only going to look at the field in the xy plane that is for z equals zero then although in general the field coordinate is x i hat y j hat z k hat for our case we're going to just ignore the z coordinate and e x y the field at any point in the x y plane is given by this expression this is the same expression now with the vectors uh, fully represented in terms of this reference frame this is a very powerful tool this is a algorithmic machine that enables you to put together the electric field uh, coming from any combination of electric charges. So for example uh, uh, here it is repeated for two charges one on the left one on the right but if we add a third charge say at the origin then we just simply add one more term and indeed you can generalize this very sweetly from to the case of two n plus one charges evenly spaced along the x-axis all with the same charge q sub s by uh, putting in this running index lowercase n that goes from minus capital N to capital N and this is an expression that is almost a, a computer uh, program instruction it will let your computer calculate the field for this string of charges for as many charges as your computer can handle or as you can tolerate. <clears throat> but you know, it's important to keep in mind that an algorithm is not the same thing as understanding. An equation is not physics. Uh, you have a string of charges. Here we have seven charges. Um, and you want to uh, discuss their electric field. One of your jobs as a student, as a professor, as a physicist, as a scientist, is to extract meaning from your numbers from your tables from your equations and here uh, I'm going to just give you a small example of that here we have a string of seven charges we know how to calculate its electric field for rather simple computer program we'll do it here uh, we, we're just going to look at the uh, electric field along the y-axis and uh, that we can do numerically without any problem. What constitutes the extraction of meaning is when we ant ask and answer questions like, what does this charge distribution look like? And I'll explain that in a second. What does it look like when you're far away? What does it look like when you're in close? What if you come in along this axis? What does the field look like along the axis? What does it look like when you get in very close to the origin? What does it look like if you go along the x-axis? What does the field look like uh, out here? What if you come in very close to the end of the axis? What does the field look like? What does the field look like in all these different circumstances? These are the questions that we, we ask. And to give you an example of an answer, let's just ask, what is this going to look like when we're far away? Well, we know if we go far enough away, it ought to look like a point charge. And so its, it's, it's field ought to be something like 7 over r squared. Um, and uh, we can compare this expression with our numerical expression to see how good an approximation it is, how much like a point charge does it look at different distances. So in the 
next slide is a graph that shows you the results of two different calculations. The red line shows you the calculation that you would get if you used the summation formula for seven charges in a line. So it is an exact calculation. The blue line, on the other hand, is the inverse square curve uh, calculated for our seven charges. And I've chosen 1.11 nanocoulombs. That's a number you're going to learn to recognize because it has the effect. If you use 1.11 nanocoulombs, it turns out that the Coulomb constant Kc so times that amount of charge comes out equal to one. And so <clears throat> by having seven of these, the Kcq in the inverse square law comes out equal to seven. So this is a curve which is seven over r squared, where r is measured in units of the separation between the charges. So we have seven charges between minus three and plus three. So we have seven charges across six meters, let's say. Here, what we see is that when you are 10 meters away from that string of charges, uh, the exact solution, it's looking quite a lot like a perfectly decent inverse square law, and it just gets better the further you go. Well, you can't be sure. You'd need to look at this in some magnification to be sure. But the point is that, uh, rather surprisingly, uh, uh, a, a rather small amount of distance away along this y-axis, the curve begins to look like uh, inverse square law. So this we consider a, a useful insight. This is an example of what I intend you to understand by the extraction of meaning. We can ask many more such questions, um, and, uh, and we will be doing that as you go along. And in fact, learning how to ask and answer such questions is probably the most important uh, benefit that you acquire by taking physics. But for now, the takeaway message is electric fields superpose. You can build a complicated field out of the simple fields of point charges. You can design configurations of charge of any shape and dimension and use superposition to find their electric fields. You could make your line of discrete charges into a line of nearly continuously distributed charge here as we do going from 7 to 14 to 28 to 56 charges all packed into the 6 meter length of this stub. You can stack these lines of charge together to get a plane of charge so that you can go from one dimensional configurations to two dimensional configurations. You can carve your two dimensional array into any shape that uh, you like and here's one that might appeal to those of you with school spirit.